King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John and bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. For Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. May God bless this reading to our understanding. You may be seated. <clears throat> One day the uh, Pope was flying into a Newark uh, airport. He had a meeting with officials of the United Nations and it was a very important meeting. Uh, the plane was delayed. It was one of those times, you know, weather related. They couldn't get the plane down, get it uh, at its regular uh, scheduled uh, arrival. And so when he finally got to the ground, he was nervous and uh, got a, a taxi quickly and he said to the taxi driver, my son, would you please drive a little faster? I, I got to get to the UN uh, downtown in New York City. And, and the driver said, well, uh, sir, I, I, I would like to, but I, I'm afraid if I have one more ticket, I'm going to lose my taxi <laughs> license. I've had too many and, and, you know, I've got three children. I... I and so the Pope said, all right, all right, um, please stop the car. And so the taxi driver stopped and Pope got out and went over and had him scoot over so he could drive. So the Pope started driving and was driving really fast and swerving around cars and so forth. Um, and of course, some of the uh, local police noticed this and seeing this taxi, they said, oh, well, we're going to get them. You know, they think they can drive so fast in our streets. We're going to give them five tickets, you know. And so this officer came up to the, to the car and after flagging them down and the lights and all. And, uh, well, nothing happened. No tickets were given. And he came back to his friend, his friend said, well, what, what's the deal? You didn't give me, I thought you were going to give him five tickets. You know, what's the deal? You didn't give me any tickets. And he said, well, somebody really big was in that car. And he said, well, well who were they? Were they? Was it the mayor of New York? He said, somebody bigger than that. Uh, well, was it the governor uh, of the great state of New York? No, no, wasn't the governor. Bigger, bigger 
than that. How about the President of the United States? Was it, it wasn't the President, was it? Bigger, bigger than that. I really don't know who he was, but the Pope was his chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody really big. You know, uh, God is bigger, right, than anything and anyone uh, in the world. I know that uh, friends of mine shy away from this story, and I bet there aren't many preachers that are even going to talk about this today because it's uncomfortable. Uh, and it deals with our sin. Uh, you know, it's just one of those passages we don't want to look at uh, because it, I think it, it hits really close to home. Uh, there, was a, there was a man who was talking to St. Peter as he was going into heaven and he was really proud of his gold, his riches, right? And he wanted to bring some gold to heaven. And he said, all, all right, you can... You can bring some. So they brought a couple of suitcases of gold and set them down. And one of the other angels said, so why did you bring street material? <laughs> the things we think are so wonderful in this place, are they really the things we need? And how long do they last? And what is really important? What are your desires? What do you desire more than anything so I want to encourage you to, to desire God's best uh, today in your life. There was a group of people that were looking at the best translation of the Bible. Uh, so somebody brought the King James Version and said that's the best translation. You know, there was the New Revised Standard and there was the Revised Standard and, and, and all, all the LVs and... <laughs> SVs and so forth, ESV. Uh, finally, somebody said, my mom's standard version is the best. Um, mom's standard version brings the Bible to life. Yeah, she lives the Bible. And I think that's the best kind. When our ancestors came across this country, uh, the theme of the Methodist movement was to save us from the wrath that is to come. Save us from the wrath that is to come. And to bring holiness. Bring holiness throughout the land. And that's God, been God's call of the United Methodist Movement. I want to encourage us to think about how we could live God's way. What is really the best way for us to live? I want you to look at the difference between these two passages that we read this morning, between Ephesians and Mark. Uh, <laughs> you can see in Ephesians the promises of God when we are faithful, when we are holy, are amazing. All of the blessed blessings, the, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is available for us if we will be faithful. God has such good plans for us. They are so much greater than all the desires of this world. It's not even close. And what happens to King Herod? King Herod thought he was such a big dude, right? <laughs> and he had all this gold probably and all this wealth. Yet he was disobedient to God, doing what a lot of folks in our culture do even today. They they desire their brother's wife, <laughs> or their, sister, their sister's husband, or somebody else's wife. That, it, that it's just not right. It's wrong. It's, and such destruction happens when that, and when that occurs. Uh, notice the difference. Even killing one of God's prophets, right? A few years ago, I was looking for a cell phone. Uh, you know, my cell phone was expensive and uh, our contract was uh, too much money, I thought, at the time. And, and they had this really good deal, you know, <laughs> out there. This was, uh, I'll, say, I'll tell you, it's in Lexington, Nebraska. 
That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to have to tell you the company. Um, but it seemed like such a good deal. And I got this phone. And the problem with it was, even though it was cheap, it was cheap. <laughs> And it had like no reception. I mean, I couldn't get reception in my house. I couldn't get reception at the church. I could hardly get reception on the highway. Every so often, yeah, I'd get a little, <laughs> you know. And I went back to him and said, you know, this, this isn't working. Uh, oh, well, we're building a tower, they said. And, you know, and you signed a contract. You've got to keep this phone for a year. Uh, or you have to pay all, a whole bunch of money. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's the way it is with sin. You know, we, it looks so good and it seems like a great thing and it's cheap, right? And everybody's doing it. <laughs> and then we get into it and it's a bad deal. And the bad deal just gets worse and worse. And that's what happened to Herod that day, wasn't it? Uh, you know, his bad deal uh, going after his brother's wife and here he is about to murder one of the most holy men of the planet on the planet. God, God said next to Jesus, John is, look at John. And he, and he killed him. Wow, that's what sin does for us. And yet I think, what are they like today? Uh, I bet Herod is in not as good a shape as John. What do you think? Uh, I hope Herod came and repented of his sin and came to, to faith, but I, if he didn't, uh, they're very, very far apart. In fact, uh, hell is not uh, just a imaginary place with the little red men running around in a fire. Hell, I believe, is separation. It's, it's being separated from God and from one another. Um, and it feels like burning, I think. I think that this Bible describes it as a place of fire, but I think that would feel like tremendous loneliness, wouldn't it? To being separated from God and from others. God wants and desires a relationship with us. That's why he sent Jesus, because he loves us and he doesn't want us to be separated. He wants us to know his love and to, and to feel it. Uh, what do you desire? What do you desire above all things? You know, is God a mean God because God allows people to go to hell to be separated? No, God just allows people to do what they want to do. God is not going to force you to know him and to follow him. But if you continue in that way, you will be separated from God and from others. But he offers grace, and he offers it all the way, I believe, until our last breath. Please, please accept God's love for you, God's best for you. Do you desire God's best, or do you want Satan's best? Which, which would you like? You know, the world will offer you temporary pleasure, uh, things that look so good, seem so fine, are so destructive. And you know in your heart of hearts that it's wrong, don't you? But it seems so good. So I want to encourage you, when you are tempted to do what you know is wrong, to keep your eyes on Jesus. I think that is the best thing to do is to keep your eyes on the one who gave his life for you. If you can pick, I think it helps me to picture, my, get my picture of Jesus. Who, what does Jesus look like for you? Get your picture of Jesus, and whenever you are tempted, get your eyes on Jesus and pray, Lord, help. Just help me. I want you. I want you more than that thing, more than that <laughs> destructive way that I'm just about to, to to fall into. I want you more. Your way is so much better. You know, God's way is not only a little better, it's 855 billion times better. Desire Him. Desire 
God desired Jesus more than anything. I want to encourage you today. Let us pray. Lord, you know how we are tempted in this world. There's so many dazzling things that seem so good, seem so fine, and yet they're hurtful. They hurt others. They hurt you. Lord, help us know and help us realize that your way is so much better. Help us turn to you, desire you. Give us a heart for you, God, a heart for your way, for your life, that you created us to live from the beginning of time. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for helping us to desire what is best for us, your way. In Jesus' name, amen.